Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Central Depository Services India Limited Q4 FI23 earnings conference call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by think star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that CDSL does not provide specific revenue or earnings guidance. Anything said on this call which reflects CDSL's outlook for the future or which could be construed as forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Praveen Agarwal from Access Capital Limited. Thank you. And over to you. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, <coughs> and welcome to this earnings call of uh, CDSL. Uh, we have the entire management team of CDSL with us, uh, led by Mr. Nihal Vora, MD and CEO. We'll start with a brief on the results uh, from Mr. Nihal, and then uh, we'll move on to Q&A. Uh, over to you, uh, sir, for the opening remarks, please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Praveen. Good afternoon, and welcome, everyone. I hope each of you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial results for the fourth quarter and full year financial year ended March 31st, 2023. As in the previous quarters, we posted a detailed financial presentation on our website for your reference. I'm joined by the CDSL Group's leadership team. Let me start with the industry highlights and then state and then take you through some of the key aspects of our performance. To begin, let me highlight that the industry tre uh, trends and then discuss some of our key performance aspects. During the financial year 2023, the capital market industry experienced a mixed performance, while certain sections continued to show a growth momentum. Retail market participation remained muted as compared to the financial year 2022. The business environment in the Q4 was similar to the full year trends described above. In addition to these industry developments, several new regulations were introduced during the year. We believe that these regulations will benefit the industry in the medium term as they aim to protect the interests of the retail investors as well as the investors at large and reduce the systemic risk. Overall, we view these regulatory measures as positive for the industry's long-term growth. This quarter, India further strengthened its retail participation in Indian capital markets. The total number of DMAT account investors in India touched a new milestone of more than 11.3 crore in quarter four of FY 2023, of which 8.3 crore DMAT account investors are registered with CDSL. The registered investors as on March 31st, 2022 was 6.3 crore, which shows an increase of 32% over the last year. We are harnessing the benefits of the digital innovation and the presence carved out across years, especially in the tier two and the tier three cities. The availability of digital services such as EDIS, margin pledge and replenish mechanism, EAGM and e-voting and online account opening has had a significant impact on the growth of Indian retail investors. However, this is just the beginning and our primary goal is to continuously enhance the financial ecosystem by making it more efficient and transparent. In terms of the performance, our strategy focuses on accelerating uh, the, the core annuity income, simplifying the process of emerging investors and fostering new developments in the Indian securities market. CDSL is committed to growing its business sustainably by diversifying its revenue, investing in advanced technology, and cultivating its people. As we celebrate our 25th year of operations, our focus remains on improving the financial ecosystem by enhancing its efficiency and transparency. We would like to prioritize and focus our Atma Nirbhar Niveshak approach while striving for innovation resulting in consistent and a healthy financial performance. We are dedicated in curating a secure financial ecosystem and providing a differentiated experiences that create value to our investors and stakeholders. Before I hand it over to Sri 
Girish Amasera, financial, our chief financial officer. I'd like to say that the growth of the Indian securities market is an extremely encouraging sign of India's potential. I also want to place our appreciation, gratitude to all our stakeholders, our regulators, depository participants, investors, issuers, and other market participants and employees for their constant faith in us. With this, I would like to hand it over to our CFO, Shri Kiresh Amasar. Thank you, Neil. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, speaking on yearly performance, uh, total standalone income has increased by 13% for the year ended March 31st, 23 at rupees 544 crore as compared to 480 crore uh, for the previous year. The net profit on a standalone basis is by, up by 3% to 272 crores as compared to uh, 264 crore during the last previous year. Uh, uh, on a consolidated basis, uh, the total income has increased by 15 crore to 620 crore for the year ended March 31st, 23 as compared to 606 crore for the previous year. The net profit on a consolidated basis is down by 11% to 276 uh, crores as compared to 312 crores. Speaking on uh, quarterly performance, the standalone total income for the March quarter, March 23 quarter, has increased by 3% to 112 crores uh, as against the uh, previous, uh, same quarter previous year of 109 crores. The standalone net profit uh, on a quarterly uh, basis for the March uh, quarter is at uh, 52 crore as against uh, uh, rupees 58 crore for the previous uh, previous year same quarter on a consolidated basis the total income uh, for the march quarter has decreased by 3% to 144 crore as against 148 crore for the uh, same quarter previous year the consolidated net profit uh, on a consolidated basis uh, is at rupees 64 crore for the march quarter 23 is again 78 crore for the same quarter previous year. Now I shall request uh, Sri Sunil Alvarez to give an update about the operation of the wholly owned subsidiary CDSL Ventures Limited. Thank you. Over to you, Sunil. I would request that in case, uh, you know, I think the numbers are already shared so that in case there are, uh, we can start off with the QA session directly. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while we poll for questions. Our first question comes from the line of Prakash Kaparia from Anvit Portfolio Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, a uh, couple of questions from my end. Uh, you know, if I look at uh, CDSL Ventures, we've seen a revenue degrowth for almost you know all quarters during the year. So, you know, can you explain what is happening at a time when you know SIP flows are strong, new demand accounts are strong, so is there pricing pressure? Is there, you know, some change in the business model? Is it competition? What is leading to this fall in revenues? Uh, so you want to finish both your questions? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. And, you know, of the employee cost, we've seen, you know, a 60% increase in 23. So, if you can share, you know, the fixed or variable nature of this to understand, you know, how would this uh, move forward on a going forward basis? And lastly, what is the capex uh, and technology spends done in 23? These were my three questions. Okay. First one, I'll ask Sunil to answer. And uh, the remaining two, I'll ask the CFO, Girish, to answer. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, if you see the KYC business, okay, there are two major sources of income. One is the creation side and the second is on the Fed side. Now, uh, the KYC business a lot depends on the uh, state of the primary as well as the secondary market. Okay, if you see last year, the number of IPOs reduced substantially as compared to the previous year. Okay, so it had an impact on the number of new accounts being opened, that is DMAT accounts and 
broking account so if you see overall stats i think around the dmat account was impacted by you know about 35% so to that extent i would disagree with you that do that do the money is coming in sips but those are accounts which are already open and for which kyc is already done so to that extent uh, you know uh, the kyc part would have not got impacted but so far as new accounts are concerned yes definitely it has got impacted because the number of broking and dmat accounts has uh, in so you know well we are saying the pace has slowed down sunil what you are saying is if if I they were growing at a x percent what i'm saying is if the dmat accounts have gone down by about 30 35% then the broking as the kyc also has got impacted by about 25% 25 to 35% so 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 it 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 goes hand in hand so you can't have more kyc and less dmat account so you know so so it it's directly a function of the dmat account or the broking account which are open so that has impacted the number of kyc and that has impacted the overall revenue okay and and you know this uh, fetch thing because incrementally you are saying the flows are coming in the same folios in mutual fund and folio addition is not so strong so the fetch business also gets affected absolutely because uh, we charge only a one time on the fetch side so once a record is fetched it is free for the lifetime so even if you are doing an sip then even if you fetch it say 12 times a year or 24 times a year i have already charged you once and that is the end of it okay so there is no real pricing change or competitive intensity which is leading to this fall it is just there, a, are, pri- there are pricing pressures on the creation side because so long as there is competition they will try to pull your customers by offering lower charges so that that's a part of uh, you know market competition so that will go on anyway okay so in terms of employee cost if you if you look at historically uh, CBSL employee cost was in single digit if you compare previous year expenditure uh, to total revenue and now it was 8% last year this year it is 13% if you if you recall previous two year two years were you know high growth years and our operations has almost increased compared to what it was uh, prior to two years and in terms of that we had to we have plans to increase manpower base so current year we have uh, we have uh, net on a net basis there is a increase in the employee strength of roughly 35 people and uh, you know typically uh, if you look at the sebi regulations also the bonus is one third of uh, so so basically that's how the uh, you know categorization of the combination works Right. Like the addition of 33 employees during this quarter, and to add, yeah, and to add to what Girish said, the regulations don't allow any ESOPs uh, to be right granted. So obviously, to retain talent, you need to kind of appropriately uh, compensate them to get the best of people and to retain them. Uh, as right. compared to our uh, comparison of employee costs, uh, there's a percentage of revenue. uh to other market infrastructure institutions we are one of the lowest so i think that continues even after this but we need to continue to retain talent to ensure that we get the best in class as a part of our structure sure sure but, and but, and girish you you mentioned you know employee cost uh, i think if i look at consolidated they are almost 15% of sales so is it some operating deleverage because you know subsidiary have not grown so that is why also on a consolidated basis it looks higher than the stand alone basis is I that gave, right i gave you the details of consolidated basis we always speak on consolidated basis but on a 550 1 five, 555 crore revenue employee cost for 80 crore so that's 15% uh, not 12 or 13% which i think you mentioned oh no keep down over on a consolidated basis is 620 crore Okay, I think you are adding other income. I am just taking income from operations. Maybe that. When, right. when I am comparing, I will always compare with total revenue. I will not compare it with operating revenue. No? Okay. 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 Good. And on the last question on the capex side, if you could give some idea, what has been the capex trend in twenty three? The capex 
expenditure that we have incurred is uh, you know in line with uh, you know, the implementation strategy that we had implemented and it is also driven by the regulator we have so i'll just uh, take that question uh, i yeah. think it's driven more with uh, the new age uh, regulatory reforms which we are bringing into place where it's a uh, 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 you know the basically the authorization happens at the depository and directly with the customer and also bringing in sync with new hardware servers and the new tech infrastructure as our volumes are growing it has to kind of be in sync with that the new age technology and also as our people are growing we need more space so this is the two broad areas in which uh, we are uh, going to be spending money in a cash right and and you will quantify that amount what we have spent in 23 i will come back on that during the call sure 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 i'll join back if i have more questions thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of swarnap mukherjee from bnk securities please go ahead hi sir thank you for the opportunity so uh, three four questions from my side Firstly, on the employee expense, the discussion just happened. So, wanted to understand uh, that uh, this uh, bonus cost that you have mentioned, which is around about a third of the fixed cost. So, is this going to uh, is this prorated uh, or provisioned over the years, over the four quarters, or will it come in disproportionately in the first quarter? Uh, uh, because I think last year first quarter also there seemed to be a bump in the employee expense. So, that is uh, that is the first question. uh secondly uh, i wanted to understand so uh, in the uh, uh, kyc uh, business what proportion of it will be coming from the dmat account opening and what proportion will be coming from uh, the kyc for other financial products uh, uh, thirdly uh, if i have to understand you know if i to make some uh, uh, color on you know how would be the number of couriers that you have At the end of FY23, or an average of over FY23, which will be what it was over uh, 22 in the DMAT accounts. Uh, just to you know have an understanding of what how how the annual issue charges could move. Uh, not looking for a forward-looking statement, but since the year is over, you must already be having the details about number of folios that you have. So some ballpark number about growth will also be. Uh, that is the third question. And uh, take expenses. Then uh, are we? Kind of reaching, hitting the peak, or should we uh, see kind of continued increase here also? So these are the four questions. Yeah, so I'll answer the first and fourth question first. Uh, on the employee cost, uh, last year it was done in one quarter. Uh, additional uh, bonus which the board had uh, recommended. This year, quarter-wise, it has been prorated. So that will how it is uh, done. on the tech uh, cost uh, uh, it is a constant uh, because see, we are in the business of providing infrastructure and technology is the key driving force and the key uh, differentiator so and technology is something which needs to constantly evolve as we move forward so based on that uh, this will be a, a process which we will continuously kind of assess and see as and when it's required we will be putting it uh, in place there is an entire uh, really structure in place before we kind of go into uh, play but there will be a uh, continuous focus on ensuring that the technology is really up to speed with the latest and uh, so that the ease of doing business as uh, basically the efficiencies of business continue to remain with cdsm alas uh, the second question uh, on the kyc i don't think we give that uh, details between uh, the mutual fund folios as well as that because it's kind of a consolidated number and it's kind of very really difficult because there could be a single investor doing both uh, in terms of very direct equity and mutual funds as regards uh, the folio i'll ask the cfo uh, uh, what has been the increase uh, over the last year as compared to it's part of uh, the presentation but i think he'll just pull it out and so the number of folio uh, previous year it was uh, 7.8 crore 
and this year it is 13.22 crore. I am saying 21-22 compared to 22-23. Okay, and uh, sir, this growth, is it safe to understand that uh, if I only were to look at the listed corporates, this uh, growth would be uh, fairly similar what we have seen? Is that it? No, no, this is kind of a combination of both listed as well as unlisted space. Uh, so, uh, this will continue to embark upon as we move forward. So the listed space are new kind of investors and yeah, unlisted space the companies are coming into the fold. But uh, in terms of overall say the share, uh, would listed so number of folios in the listed space dominate the number uh, the you know number of folios uh, in the unlisted part of the company yeah, yeah, because at least the number yes. of shareholders will yeah, be limited. Yeah, yeah, folios obviously would dominate in the listed space because uh, uh, the number of investors by its very definition is has to be more than 250. Uh, being un in a unlisted is lower than 250 in investors. So obviously by that very definition. The domination would be in the business. Sure, sir. So, just again, a uh, quick follow up on the KYC numbers. I understand that you don't give a broad detail, but it would be, would it be fair to have I mean, some kind of ballpark, say 80% or 90% coming from BMAX so that we can understand and think about it? It would be kind of difficult to assess because there are a lot of common ones which could be across both uh, the asset classes. So, it will be difficult to come to a ballpark number on that. Yeah, I can I can I take that question. See what happens is when somebody fetches the only tag that intermediary. Now that intermediary may be opening in at uh, you know for fetching it for a DMAT account uh, or for a broking account or for you know what to say uh, the investors having some mutual fund investment. We we only have a tag of the intermediary, so it's very difficult for us to figure out you know for what particular purpose the KYC has been fetched. Got it, sir. Very helpful. Thank you so much, sir, and all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sentil Kumar from John Ray Capital Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I could see uh, uh, what capital worth in progress of rupees 173 crores. Uh, can you please elaborate on that? What kind of investment is it? Yeah. So I'll ask the CFO to answer that. So uh, last year we have uh, purchased two floors at the Marathon Futurist building. That represents the capital working program. The whole 173 crores, am I right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, good. And my second question is on uh, insurance deposit with this match. Uh, and, uh, where are we, we will compare to the last year? Even though in the last year uh, we can't call the management said like now we are in the early stage of implementation. So, any strategies to improve uh, again market share in that? Yeah, so there is a, a move towards. Uh, we have already recruited a professional MD and CEO. He's in the process of joining, and there will be a management team which will get created. But, however, the regulatory changes are also at the cusp of change. Uh, it's yet on a voluntary basis, it's yet not been converted into a mandatory basis. Uh, but there is definitely a value proposition, both from an investor as well as from an insurance company point of view. So as the market evolves and matures, they will understand the key uh, the benefits to it, and that will move towards that. Uh, also, the, uh, the regulator is also looking at it very closely, and is going to come out with the necessary policy formulations as soon as they feel it is required. Any timeline for that? When when can we expect? I can't predict how that regulator will come out with the policy formulation. So we are in constant touch. Whatever inputs they need, we are giving them. But that is up to them to finalize when they will come. Out. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Karthik Chalapa from Indus Capital Advisors, Hong Kong Limited. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. I have uh, three questions. The first one is, despite the strong growth in our uh, depository accounts, the revenue growth still seems to be challenged, especially on the transaction charges side. 
apart from lower retail participation which you alluded to at the beginning of the call are there any other factors at play which is impacting revenue growth yeah so it's basically the delivery volumes uh, of the exchanges which drive the market based uh, in transactions and over the last financial year there has been a reduction at about 33% of the delivery based volumes on the exchanges and that kind of explains the uh, reduced uh, charges or the revenue for the depository because it's only when it culminates into a delivery uh, that is when uh, the charges are paid to uh, the depository got it so apart from that there is really no rate reduction or any sort of competitive pressures which are at play which is causing this it's just purely volume driven yeah yeah it's purely volume driven exactly okay excellent so the second question is on the technology spend which you alluded to where you are saying you are uh, continuously you need to assess the volume and the requirement and enhance the spend if you were to bifurcate the spend between those which are directly related to higher volumes was this uh, a different kind of technology what would that split be if you were to do that for your total spend so we find of uh, we have already uh, created that framework which makes the infrastructure really scalable and uh, it is uh, done with uh, the exponential growth which we have seen in the number of dmat accounts over the last 2 to 3 years uh, so from that spend uh, spend is more or less done but however there is a constant assessment done and bringing in value proposition more at really the application stage on how uh, basically the transactions are getting really processed so that really the throughput uh, time comes down it uh, it can handle scale so there is a complex web of uh, various uh, uh, kind of technological uh, uh, basically inputs which are put into play which kind of uh, really assess that where we need to spend on the application side or on the hardware side depending so that the uh, basically the stakeholders will continue to enjoy uh, ease of doing business and a value uh, proposition with remaining is serious or uh, to ask it in a different way if i just look at the fourth quarter exit number of about 10 to 11 crore of uh, computer related opex Uh, would annualize that be more or less uh, in line with let's say what you are thinking subject to volume changes uh future i'll be it will be difficult for me to predict that but uh, i can assure you that there is a very robust uh, process of spend which is done uh, in terms of what is absolutely essential is getting uh, spent and uh, there is a framework so as a company we don't give future uh, kind of uh, guidance so i'll have to kind of not be able to answer that question got it so last question sir is to mention that uh, you have now reached about 83 million accounts out of let's say about 130 million which implies an market share of somewhere close to 72 73% uh, which means on an incremental market share basis it's even higher would it be fair to say that with growth more or less moderating or normalizing the market shares have more or less peaked for you difficult to again say about the future because Three years ago, we were at 46%, and at that time also, somebody could have said that this is kind of a kind of an optimum level at which uh, both the uh, is the market will function. But uh, there has been a surge which has happened. So again, market is basically a dynamic place. Uh, difficult to really predict whether you've reached or not. My intent is, uh, and I think overall the ecosystem is about six to seven percent of the population is only yet in the securities market. So the market at at large is uh, has a huge potential to grow. Whether that growth happens in the next one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, that is for some something which we will have to see. But there is a potential, and I am not looking at what is the current trend. It's more of the potential which is yet not come into the market. india is a young population and uh, we are adding youngsters and uh, large middle class into our population 
every year there is a huge potential which is there but well, just one follow up sir based on the response that you gave uh, if you were to look at any accounts at a household level what will it be on a household penetration level uh that again will be a little difficult to answer because uh, people have uh, sometimes have more than one account also which is permissible under the law <clears throat> and uh, sometimes they are in basically uh they are in joint holder with uh, the family member so again uh, each household is depending on how many people are there also so it's difficult to really assess how much will be the penetration from a household level but i can say that uh, today cdsl is about 98% of the pin codes of the country where uh, the dmat accounts is there so there's a fairly uh, comprehensive spread in where uh the cds ld mat accounts for that all from my side wish you and the team all the very best thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of prithvish uppal from amsec please go ahead uh i'm here so i thank you for taking my question uh the first question i had was just to follow up on the transaction uh, income that uh, we report so um, again for this quarter we seen that you know for dmat account realization has you know it was it actually averaging close to about 24 uh, rupees so it has gone down substantially so i mean i understand one is one reason you mentioned is the fact that there have been lower uh, uh, there's been lower retail market participation but despite you know uh, a higher increment in term you know, especially in this quarter in incremental demand accounts uh, so uh, is it fair to uh, you know assess that uh, uh, the amount of per demand account transaction has also reduced substantially and do we expect uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, you know this i mean the number to sort of be the kind of new normal because last two years the per account uh, you know number of transactions would have obviously peaked for us so has you you know have you seen that this has come back to sort of pre covid level uh, uh, so that would be a first question uh, second question is in terms of the uses of cash uh, you know so apart from the investments that uh, uh, we make uh, and uh, the dividend uh, that we have been declaring any other you know uh, uh, cash uses that you see in terms of you know for, for from a growth perspective uh, uh, you know any any color on that or, uh, that you could you could uh, you could give and third uh, you know this been talked about on uh, previous calls which is the pricing uh you know on issuer charges from 11 rupees so you know any discussion uh, uh, uh from from with the regulator where this is uh you know uh, uh, how the how the conversation is so just these are my three questions <clears throat> on the first one uh, is not only as i said in my early reply to an earlier question is the delivery based volume because you see the delivery based volume has seen a reduction of about 31% over the last year and that is really this is a key reason whether we have reached a peak or not uh, is very difficult to assess because it's your market uh, function as to what is the volumes which are going to as very difficult to predict volumes in the uh, coming years and therefore uh, the important thing is create the right toolkits right uh, value proposition so that uh, it is there to support any market as we move forward uh your second question was uh, uh i'm sorry could you repeat your second question yeah so it was uh, to do with uh, you know the uh, operating cash flow that we are generating yeah. so yeah. uh so it, yeah so on that operating cash flow is uh, uh, you know we are finding infrastructure company so the strength of the balance sheet becomes very critical as more and more assets and more and more demat accounts are added to your fold it kind of gives that comfort factor uh, there are uh, uh, areas of growth both in the securities markets and in the other markets where we have a subsidiaries uh, there is a constant endeavor as india embarks upon its journey of digitization 
uh, more and more uh, products and platforms are going to come into core, which will require that uh, kind of investment, both in terms of systems, technology, and people, uh, to ensure that we are kind of basically uh, in in sync with what the reforms are getting in the, in uh, in uh, in this. Also, we have just added our uh, uh, basically the account aggregator model, where we have gone live as a financial information uh, provider. That's a new uh, line of uh, business uh, which CDSL has recently it's the first depository to go live. Uh, uh, so that's one. Second is also the other sectors like uh, the commodities repository and the insurance sector. So this is something which we continuously kind of would need to assess as we move forward. And we have had a consistent uh, dividend payout, uh, which has been consistent over the years, 60% of about 60% uh, of the operating uh, profit, which gets, uh, of, is it a net profit, uh, which gets uh, uh, paid out as dividend. Yeah, I'm thinking so on the last question, the right thing. Uh, that uh, will be difficult to comment because normally we don't uh, disclose uh, the SEBI conversations. Uh, it's kind of confidential. Uh, but uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, process which we will follow. And if we add and when uh, and whichever form it gets up to, that will get promptly communicated to the market. And so this lastly, just a data cleaning question, you mentioned the folio number uh, to our earlier participants. So just list the uh, number, so can you just uh, if, if, if uh, you could just repeat that please? It's part of uh, the presentation it is uploaded on our website. It will become easier. We can repeat it, but I think it will be easier for you to just look at that. Mm -hmm. So you can just uh, so in finance in last in financial year 21 22 we uh, had a folio count of seven seven crore 68 lakhs and for financial year 22 23 we had a count of 13.72 crore. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. That's it for much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Parimal Mithani from Credential Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. So I just wanted to know, recently you came out and you mentioned in your previous uh, statement about the account, uh, account aggregator model. Can you explain in detail how do you plan to go ahead and how does it benefit CDS? No, so the account aggregator model is where uh, basically the information flow uh, from various uh, sectors, be it banking, insurance, securities, market, can be accessed based on client consent and given to an information user who can uh, curate the data and give it to him in a structured format. Uh, there is, uh, so this is, uh, and there are various uh, components which are expected to be added to it, be it uh, basically the income tax, GST, etc. So it's a common information flow framework uh, which is client consent based, and that's where we are part of the larger in ecosystem. And does it have a uh, asset? Uh, does this data monetizable or it, how it is? Uh, how does it help us in the, in the future? Uh, it's kind of really early days as to how the commercials will get uh, factored in, but there will be some amount of commercials which will come in at some stage. Okay, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Vivek Setia from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. So, um, in our last call, you had mentioned some numbers about CDSL ventures, their financials, uh, the creations, the fetches. So, if you could just uh, help me with those numbers for Q4 or F5. So, total income, uh, annual issue income, that we have clocked during this financial year is 183 crore. Is against previous year income of 115. CVL. So, uh, in case of uh, CVL, uh, we have clocked the income of 87 crore during this financial year. 
as compared to 120 crore of uh, previous financial year. Yeah. And uh, the profitability? It's actually all there on our website. You may actually you look at you it. put all the numbers on the presentation also. The presentation, I don't think there's, there are these numbers in the presentation. Neither creation nor fix is. Uh, I've been looking at the presentation. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. In terms of presentation, we have creation fetch. Normally, uh, you know, we just give us a broad trend. Uh, finally, it has to culminate into a revenue, and that is more critical. So, from again our financial uh, disclosure point of view, we are more uh, focused on how it culminates into basically the revenue. So, I think that would be a fair. Uh, reply to okay. your question. Okay, and so the other components of other income like e cash, e voting, if you could uh, give a uh, give out the number of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will still repeat. You want on quarterly basis or you want uh, full year? Anything will do. Okay, so on a quarterly basis, we have uh, we have closed transaction charge at thirty three crore. Uh, online data charge, which is uh, CVL income, at twenty two crore. IPO corporate action at uh, 7 crore, uh, annual issuer income at uh, 47 crore, cash and e-voting put together at uh, uh, 9 crore. This constitute uh, almost 96% of our total operating revenue. Okay. And uh, the pledge income? I don't think we gave that pledge income separately, right? It's part of the transaction income. Okay. Okay. And just wanted to understand about your uh, outlook, like going forward. Um, like, are we completely dependent on the growth in the retail participation, or uh, like, how are we planning to grow our business? And will it be purely volume driven going forward, or uh, are we looking into other avenues as well? So, yeah, what's the outlook like? Oh, I think the see again, future outlook we don't give as a policy. But I can just give you in terms of numbers, but just a strategic. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, it's important that we are going to continue to invest in technology because the entire digital journey is something which is uh, uh, going to grow as we move forward. And uh, CDSL is going to be at the forefront of that uh, journey, uh, both from an ease of doing business, from a in investor protection point of view making investors self-sufficient, so giving more to the investors to take decisions themselves, that's going to be our cornerstone of our entire focus. Uh, obviously, we will be uh, kind of part of the market infrastructure institutional framework which SEBI has described. So that is something which will continue to uh, really embark upon and as more and more new policies, products, and platforms get uh, permitted by SEBI, uh, CDSL would be as a part of that uh, framework. Okay. Thanks. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sanket Koda from Avengers Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, just, just two, two data points. If you can give uh, the, 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 uh, the full provisioning cost in the current quarter. And, and second, this is wanted to understand that uh, the uh, corporate action income is, is, is really weak in the fourth quarter. Is, 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 is that a fair assumption to make, sir? Yeah, so I'll answer the second question first, and I'll ask the second question to be answered. First question to be answered with the CFO. Uh, normally, the AGMs uh, technically occur in the second and third quarter. It means if it gets extended, otherwise, it's the first and second quarter. Uh, so it is kind of connected with uh, the AGM. So you, it's a kind of a broad trend that you see um, major income happening in the first second, and when it gets extended, like it has been done in the past two years, to the third quarter also. I'll uh, request Kirish to answer the first question. In terms of latest provision, there is a reversal of two crore forty lakhs. Okay, sir. And 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 two 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 questions with respect to the business there. Uh, just uh, yeah, just uh, KYC for insurance companies, especially the general insurance companies, uh, uh, was made mandatory from January 2023. And uh, yeah, and just wanted to understand that this revenue 
we somehow flow into the our insurance repository business if, if we are doing the KYC for the insurance companies or or is it done through CKYC KYC predominantly and, and therefore therefore not creating any revenue with respect to KYC on insurance, which is being made mandatory from principle. No, this is there was a draft circular which was proposing to make it mandatory. It has not converted itself into a final circular, so it yet remains in a draft stage. So as of now, it is not mandatory. It is optional. Yes, sir, uh, conversion into a the uh, uh, demat format is, is voluntary yet, but but the KYC has been made mandatory from from first January, sir. So so, so just just wondering that KYC income flow is somehow getting getting reflected in our insurance repository income or not? Sir, uh, this KYC that you are talking about is for the policy for the creation of the policy for the existing policy which is handled by the insurance company themselves because bulk of the policy is stored in the physical form. So this doesn't come to the uh, depository scale in terms of our group company CBL for the reason that it yeah, is right. part share uh, or CBL uh, because it is in the physical form. So this KYC is done by the insurance companies internally. Okay, so so you mean to say that when when it becomes uh, when when the deposit or demand format becomes a reality compulsory, eh, not then then uh, you, you have a two revenue sources. One is KYC income probably, and second is the uh, uh, charges with respect to the uh, 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 repository income, right? Uh, or yeah, that format. is normally how this business works. So there is uh, both sides uh, business which uh, is potentially expected to flow, but it depends yeah. as and when it is made mandatory. Got it. And, and sir, uh, next uh, second, last one from my side is that uh, this account aggregator FIC. Uh, what what are the uh, charges we are going to charge uh, for for FIC as a financial information provider? And and finally, do we do we want to get into PSA that is technology service provider thing, or or we just wanted to remain a file providing uh, uh, a financial information uh, uh, to to the uh, to the guys? Who asked for it? So the commercials, as I said earlier, it's early days. It's yet not uh, yet finalized. It's in the process of first really establishing the framework, and then the commercials will kind of follow. So that is for us to wait and watch in the future. Uh, TDSL will continuously assess uh, which part of the account aggregator model the FIT was mandated by the regulator, and we are kind of the first depository which have done it. Uh, whether we are part of the account aggregator model uh, and the FIU, that's the financial information user model, is something which we will have to really assess as the system really uh, grows and matures. Okay, so perfect, perfect. Uh, thanks, thanks for answering. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sujal Azare, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Am I am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, my first question was that the uh, IRD IRDAI mandated the dematerialization of new insurance policy. I guess that you have answered in previous questions. Yeah. So that's not an issue. I just wanted. Uh, I'm a naive investor, so I just wanted to ask you what are the Key revenue drivers in your company of CDSO. Okay, so uh, basically there are uh, uh, three principal revenue drivers. One will be uh, for DMAT accounts, the transaction revenue. So every debit is charged by the depositories, so that's a revenue charge. Second is okay. the the companies which are dematerialize or who share the dematerialize pay us an annual uh, fee so that's a second charge and the third is the know your customer there's a repository which are subsidiary cdsl ventures is there uh, so that's the third source that for every creation of a know your customer or a fetch by anybody in the system there's a charge with cbl gets so these are the three principal charges Besides that, there is uh, in, uh, for uh, the annual uh, for the annual general meetings we conduct it through uh, uh, online mode, so we charge companies for that value add service. There is an e-voting platform which we have, so the other area where we charge. 
So these are principally the broad areas of revenue for uh, so which uh, which is the most uh, revenue gaining like uh, factor of all of this which you uh, stated? So I would recommend uh, you know there is a fairly easy to comprehend presentation on a website. It will give you not only what is the comparison, how has the growth been over the years. It's a fairly uh, pictorially uh, represented presentation it will be easy for you to understand so any follow on questions feel free to in email us we will give you a reply okay okay thank you sir that's it from my side <clears throat> from my side thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of prakash kaparia from anvit portfolio managers private limited please go ahead yeah if if that capex figure is available i just wanted to know that For a consolidated basis, we have capitalized 35 crore uh, as an capital expenditure. On a standalone basis, we have capitalized 22 and half crore. Oh. Ah. Thanks, thanks, Sirish. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Vinita Sagar from Infosys. Please go ahead. Vinita, uh, your line is unmuted. You could speak your question. Since there's no response, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, please press star one. Our next question comes from the line of Vinita. Sagar from Infosys, please go ahead. Since there is no response, we move on to our next question. Which is from the line of Rajesh Kajra from Informis. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello. My question is with regard to the Q4 um, transaction charges trend. In that, uh, uh, you mentioned that it is based on the debits that take place uh, and is linked to the delivery volume, obviously. So I wanted to understand two things from this. One is key. What was the Trend in the delivery volume in Q4 uh, versus the year ago quarter, and secondly, uh, I wanted to understand if the uh, is the per debit uh, charges that are applied, um, is it uh, based on the value of the de- of the trade which is uh, where the debit is taking place, or is it based on per debit that is going on the fixed charge? Or is it based on the number of shares that are getting debited? So just wanted a clear understanding of it. Yeah. Thank you. So the first question is: There's a 31% reduction in the year-on-year delivery volume across exchanges over the previous financial year, uh, and as compared to this financial year ended. Um, so uh, that has gives you an overall trend that why there has been a Lower transaction revenue. The second question is that we charge on a per debit basis. However, it's basically a slab-wise approach. So a person who is a frequent user of the system has to pay a per debit lower charge compared to a infrequent user of the system. So it ranges from five rupees fifty paise per debit to four point twenty-five paise. Or debit, depending on the number of transactions which you are doing. It is, it is not linked to the number of shares or the value of the number of shares. It is per debit instruction where the charges are done. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sanket Gora from Avantage Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity again. 
Uh, sir, in the past, you have disclosed the annual issuer charges broken down into listed and unlisted. And similarly, uh, you used to give the pledge margin income or, or pledge income in the transaction. It will be great if you can share this time. Uh, the first one, we never used to do it, listed and unlisted. I think pledge uh, is what the CFO tells me that uh, they do disclose. So, uh, this quarter, we have done an income of 3 crore. Okay, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nehal Vora for closing comments. Now, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for all your questions and continue to remain safe and secure. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.